So in 1808, America elected a Democratic Republican, which was James Madison. And the, what you start to see is pretty much the decline of the Federalist Party. And this is something that's going to happen throughout the early part of the 1800s. James Madison was a president who was the father of the Constitution, married to a lovely woman, Dolly Madison, who was the president's greatest asset. Uh, we'll talk about her in a little bit. The challenges and successes of Madison's presidency had to do with Native American troubles in the West. And let's start out talking about Tecumseh. So in Ohio, you have a Shawnee chief named Tecumseh and his brother Tenskatawa, known as the Prophet, who are actively solidifying a pan-Indian confederacy to resist further white encroachment on Indian lands. So they're uniting together to try to fend off um, further white um, areas that are coming into their area. The demographics of the situation look as if 230,000 Americans are living in Ohio, while another 40,000 inhabited Indiana, Illinois, and Michigan. The Indian population of the same area was much smaller, probably at about 70,000. So you can see why Tecumseh and his um, brother were trying to organize this confederacy to fend off white encroachment. William Henry Harrison, actually um, the territorial governor of Indiana, assembled the leaders of several tribes to negotiate the Treaty of Fort Wayne, promising it would be the last session of the land the United States would seek. He secured three million acres at about two cents per acre. If you remember, the United States government was always trying to make deals to get the Native Americans to cede their land. And this is another effort to do that. Unfortunately, Tecumseh was very angry at this and basically um, got the other southern tribes that he formed alliances with to attack William Henry Harrison at the Battle of Tippecanoe, which is a place called Tippecanoe Creek. The Americans won this, but unfortunately it, it left a bad taste in the mouth of the Native American tribes and the Native American relations between each other uh, were going to, to obvious uh, to, to be were going to sour in the in the coming years. Here's a picture of where the Tippy Canoe River is, if you can see right around here. And this is again the significance of this battle is that from, from now on, uh, the, the policy of the United States government is, uh, is going to be to try to clear Native Americans out for settlement. Um, and mistrust is going to color the relationships between Native Americans and, and whites. Another problem was the War of 1812. Funny question, when was the War of 1812? Well, actually, it was from 1812 to 1814. And what we have here is basically a continuing war with Great Britain and France that are attacking each other. Unfortunately, America is being caught in the middle as America continues to ship to both of these countries. Between 1809 and 1812, um, attacks by both countries on U.S. ships are continuing. In 1809, Congress replaced Jefferson's embargo with the Non-Intercourse Act, which prohibited trade only with Britain and France and their colonies. Now, different factions arose in response to these actions by Great Britain and France, and one of them was called the War Hawks. Uh, most of these were congressional Republicans from the West and the South, and they wanted to have a war with Britain. Um, what they wanted to do is to increase defense spending and increase the size of the military. In June 1812, Congress declared war on Great Britain in a vote divided among sectional lines. New England and the Middle Atlantic states opposed the war, which makes sense as they were kind of uh, for trade with Great Britain. 
because they feared its effect on commerce and trade while the South and the West were strongly for it. And the whole reason this is being done is to kick Britain out of, of our area um, and also to um, assert our dominance and, and to fight back against the British for doing these things to our sailors. The Warhawks proposed an invasion of Canada, but America was not prepared for a war. By late 1812, Americans began to experience some victories, many at sea. Andrew Jackson had also defeated Creek Indians who had sided with the British, gaining thousands of acres for the United States and the Mississippi Territory. So what was the War of 1812 really about? It was about territory, land, looking for an excuse to go to war with the power and to try to get more land out of it. Here's a picture of a map of the War of 1812. As you can clearly see, most of the battles are at sea. There's some battles here in Canada as well as some battles here in the south. But right here, this is great area where the United States is going to gain lots of territory and land. Just some other things where the United States are trying to invade Canada. I think it's fair to say that the United States wanted to have more territory, which is a huge reason why the War of 1812 was, was fought. Here's some more pictures of the campaigns of 1813, and you can see us attacking Toronto and also across the border here between um, Detroit and into what is present-day Ontario. The British did some serious damage here to um, American, the American capital. They attacked it along the Chesapeake region where basically um, in August of 1814 British ships had sailed into the Chesapeake Bay and had entered the capital. They even burned down the White House, the capital, a newspaper office, and an arsenal. Luckily the Maryland militia turned them back before they could get all the way into Baltimore. British troops marched from Canada into New York State, but they retreated to Canada after a series of mistakes. In January 1815, another large British army landed in Lower Louisiana and were defeated by General Andrew Jackson's militia just outside New Orleans, and that is where Francis Scott Key wrote the national anthem for, because of the bombs bursting in air over New Orleans. The Treaty of Ghent, which was signed in December 1814, settled few of the issues that had led to the war. Uh, by then, no, the countries were pretty much tired of fighting, and, excuse my email there, <laughs> sorry, and um, neither country could claim victory, and no land actually changed hands. The Americans eventually dropped their plea for an end to impressments and gave up any claim to Canada. In return, the British agreed to stop all aid to the Indians. So really, for... James Madison, his unfortunate problem was this battle between Great Britain and the United States, which was a difficult thing, um, but nothing was really resolved. Um, if anything, the War of 1812 shows how Americans were interested in gaining more land, more territory at the expense of Native Americans and at the expense of other powers in North America. In the next lecture, we will look at James Monroe and John Quincy Adams.